Back in 1991 and 1992, Terminator 2 Judgment Day was a pop culture force to be reckoned with. T2 broke box office records and won awards, pioneered computer effects in movie making, and tells an incredible story. It was also masterfully marketed, sweeping across the interests of a rather wide audience, from teenagers watching Arnold Schwarzenegger's T-800 in a Guns N' Roses music video to younger kids collecting and playing with the action figures. And of course, there was the video games. Each home gaming platform had a Terminator 2 game, some sort of scroll screen game that basically follows the scenes of the movie, but didn't really stand apart from other action games. But one mark of a true 90s youth is the tale of when they first set eyes on the T2 shooting game in their local arcade. Maybe it was the design of the cabinet or the realistic graphics, sounds, and gun kickback, but playing that game was intense, to say the least. TJ joined me to talk T2 at Banded Brewing in Biddeford, Maine a few weeks ago, but we focused on the Sega Genesis version of the arcade hit, which honestly didn't pack the same punch as the cabinet version. However, it still stands as a noticeable landmark on the 1990s pop culture horizon. Alright, so I am here with TJ at Banded Brewing in Biddeford, Maine, which is the most fun place to say over and over again. And um, we're going to talk about, well, what, what was the item that you selected today? It's a Terminator 2 Judgment Day Sega Genesis cartridge. And they got to a point where they didn't have to write out the whole name of the movie. Either. No, it was, it was just, just T2. Everyone just knew it was T2. That, right. was, that was it. No, no need for it uh, to be spelled out for you. And this is the Sega Genesis arcade game put onto the Sega Genesis. So... I have a feeling that both of us probably had a very similar experience when the first time we saw the arcade version of this. But why don't you go tell me your first reaction when you saw the arcade game of T2. Dumping uh, dollars and dollars into the first level and never been able to get by the first yeah. level. It was, like, I, I was un unbelievably hard. It uh, was so scary, too. And, like, and I, I don't know why. Like, how much money do they want? you? Was, a, was level two a lot easier if you got there? I don't know. It probably was. Right, probably right. Just, like just a grenade, grenade. Walking grenade. through a, right. a mall, you know, like, it's the mall scene. I saw Terminator 2 when I was like, way too young, you know? So for, like, years at daycare or wherever yeah. I was drawing, <laughs> only thing I ever drew was the, like, the flashback scenes yeah. to the war of Terminator oh, 2. As it was it, so captivating. I remember I, I saw that movie, eh, I was probably like nine or ten when I saw it. And I think as I was watching, I'm like, I'm surprised I'm being allowed to watch this right now. <laughs> but um, for whatever reason, my parents were okay with it. Because they had toys. Like, they had action figures, you know, marketed to little kids of the Terminator. Right, for, I mean, for Arnold, the right? Yeah. yeah, they had the, the T-800 exoskeleton, you know, endoskeleton, whatever it is, the skeleton guy. And, the, you know, they had all the characters. And I remember friends in my class, I was, like, in fifth grade, and they had the toys, and, and then, like... Yeah, we watched the movie, and I thought it was brilliant. I didn't, you know, there was violent, and we, you know, had to look away at certain parts. But I, the overall message of the movie is so awesome and so strong. And yet, then you go to the video game in the arcade, and it's just a free-for-all shoot -em up <laughs> like, Right, like, right. There's no plot anymore. None it's of just... that is, like, mentioned at all. There's no, like, no fate but what we make for ourselves. It's just... I mean, I like that they tried to go back and make the... War of yeah. the Robots with the Christian Bale version, right? Because what I always wanted to see, yeah. But I mean, that but, movie wasn't any good. But. but then that came out in a time period that was really bad for those kinds of movies, right? Right, right. And, you know, they. I was excited for that too. I remember when that was being advertised. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Because T3 was just a garbage dump. Yeah. That was just unwatchable. That wasn't fair. And then when they did the, the Christian Bale one, I'm like, okay, Batman. You know, being in. I could see this. Like, it, it yep. could work. John and Connor. Mick G. Remember Mick G? Yeah. Was the director. Right. I'm like, oh, that's the guy who also did Charlie's Angels. Yeah, coming so hot we, off Charlie's Angels. We, they we were, should have probably known better than that. Give him $200 million yeah. to make a Terminator movie. You know, I, I think Charlie's Angels is like the most 2000s movie right. ever made. You know, with the, you know, the weird CGI stuff for no reason. Um, but yeah, this, this video game, I like, when that came out, I don't even think it was... 
I don't think it was exactly at the same time as the movie. I think it was a little bit after the movie, probably a year or two later. Things took a lot longer back then. Right. You know? To develop it. Right. And, and I don't remember any build up to it because I mean how do you really market an arcade game you don't it's it's just like it just shows up so I feel like the video games of the 90s have the same problem with movies from now is that they Sega paid so much to adapt the for the rights to adapt the video game than the video game they have any money to spend on the game so right. the game comes out and it's garbage right same thing happened with that uh, the, remember Judge Dredd yes I was really excited about the Judge Dredd video game and it's really bad yeah, it's I, just like Mario Right. With a gun, you know, just, and it was, it was like scrunched right. down, and, and they would so they would make these really bad video game adaptations of movies, and now it's the other way where they're making really bad movie adaptations of video games. Right, except The Last of Us, it's really good. <laughs> they can't seem to get it right. There's a few that are really good, you know. I think a lot of the Disney ones did carry over pretty well. What's the best <sighs> video adaptation or movie adaptation of video games? Oh, okay. Game? So going the other way. Going the other way. Yeah, it's kind of hard to say because I stopped watching them after a while. Right. <laughs> but it, it says actually one of the first episodes I ever did on my podcast was about the Mortal Kombat movie, and I think it was like episode two, and it was like not the game but the movie, and it was like and I honestly I've never really seen the whole thing. I've just seen parts of it, but it it was still like it says something about the time period that you know for the longest time movies they would pull their ideas from books. And then it was TV shows. And then it was, you know, books have always been there. But then somewhere around the 90s, they're like, all right, video games. Because they had story components to them. They're like, okay, like Mortal Kombat does kind of have a story. You can make a movie out of it. A really bad movie, but it's still a story. Um, the, going the other direction, Terminator 2, there was, I think, a Genesis version. I know there's definitely a Nintendo version of the story of the movie turned into a game and it was really bad it wasn't good at all it was really hard I remember over and over again failing on the level where you're supposed to be trying to rescue John Connor from you know going through the canals in Los Angeles you know that thing and for some reason the Terminator the unstoppable Terminator kept dying as he he would slam into a, a, a fence and I'm like, I don't think that would stop him. I'm pretty sure he would be able to keep going, but that would it was end. electrified. It was, it was yeah. A, he's like uh, liquid metal fence. You know, look, he, he would, <laughs> he he wouldn't keep going. So I was like, I didn't like that. When I saw this game in the the arcade, they even go one step farther. If you look at the cartridge, they actually show the game, the the oh, arcade oh, that, game, the actual arcade just game. Just so they from... know, it's like, all right, if you've gotten this far, you bought the box, <laughs> or you're renting it. <laughs> right. And you're about to put it into your machine. You're like, yes, this is the one from the arcade. It's not the garbage that you played elsewhere. So, what? I don't know. What do you, what do you think? What? Because the game in the arcade is not the movie. What did they? Well, I don't know. I, I I've literally never seen past level one. I don't this, know how to get past level the one. The home in version there. is a little bit easier. Obviously, because you don't have to spend extra money on it. Right, right, right. Keep right. hitting, and it's not nearly as intense. I remember that was the thing about the arcade too, game. Like, right. Yeah. And like those faces would yeah, just yeah. show up, and they just like pop right up in front golden of you. ones for some well, reason. Do you remember the thing that the, I don't know if there was more than one made like after it, but then there was the the Aerosmith game, yes, Jerry, which was the exact same game, just Revolution with the CDs. X. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why. Same I, game. I was on a Wikipedia tangent a couple weeks ago, and I looked up that exact thing, and turns out, first of all, the woman in in Revolution X, the the mistress, whatever, like a dominatrix type thing. She actually she played Sonya in Mortal Kombat. Like she and she's been in a bunch of other stuff. In the video game or in the movie? I, the video game. Video game. Because in the movie, it's the woman from Billy Madison. I was right. Uh, <laughs> and which I just watched before I came here today. Oh, per- look yeah. at how it's like. Yeah, yeah. It's not quite a circle. It's like a figure no, eight. Everything just kind of you know. It's like this. Uh, you know. It's it's the symbol for infinity. Oh, right, everything right, right. just like wraps into each other. So um, you're right. Revolution X was identical game. Literally has nothing to do with Aerosmith other than... <laughs> right. Every once in a while they're playing in the background yeah. of the titty bar. And, and, and uh, even that, it's like, they're not... They never came across to me as a band that would have ultra-violence connected to them. Like, don't you think like Megadeth or Metallica right, right. would have a lot more to do with the game where there's blood and guts everywhere? Yeah, but, and, uh, Aerosmith has always just been uh, I don't, sellouts. I don't, can you be a sellout as a rock band, but... 
Like they've always been. Once I found out Aerosmith didn't write any of their own music, I got really disappointed. They're just like they're ready to go anytime. Yeah, they were just a. Uh, <laughs> you have a video game. Yeah, yeah. What's it? <laughs> How much? Nailed it. Well, they got the roller coaster in Disney right, World right, for a yeah. while. You know, like, There's probably you know, they probably have a restaurant somewhere. A roller coaster. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> ride it, move, ride it, time. <laughs> so, um, this game, the material it's made from, um, both the I guess the movie and the. The original game itself, the arcade game, what does that tell you about the time period that those two things were received so well? That people were all about the movie and then the game was like an event. I remember the, the arcades that had it were like, there was crowds around it, there people were like watching. When you played it, you were in this like tunnel thing, like you couldn't see the rest of the right. arcade. I, I, so you were like drawn into. It's a very like visceral thing because it was like the the best game to play, at all the arcades. And sometimes you show up and one of them is broken, you know, and it was just really disappointing you have to play by yourself. Right. Uh, I, Which is terrifying because right, like, I have no right. help. I'm not going to win. Right. Even the people in the front. Right. Like the the your allies on the you know the other humans, who you accidentally shoot and they're like ow, like I, they yell at you. <laughs> I feel like back then. Maybe they were just taking whatever it was and slap it into a second cartridge. Yeah. You know, without I don't know what to say without much thought, but you know, it was really easy to do back then. Because you know, this did not have the same effect on me. When I put it into the Genesis and played it and with it well, you, and it's like light out right. and I'm you need like, a rumble pack, I think, because the the, the shaking yeah, part. Yeah, if you wanted big, it, yeah, right, you right. could make it And like I mean, how often do you get to hold a back then hold a gun? Right. You know, you're holding the big Especially a futuristic, futuristic right, right, yeah, yeah, machine yeah, gun. Shoots thing. grenades from the sides and right. You know, I think, uh, you know, they try to capture that. and They've always been trying to take our, it's like immediate nostalgia. Right. Remember last week when you were at the arcade? We can do it at home now, right? They've always been trying to, I think, package that and, and, and it was It was it an awkward age for that kind of stuff because even Mortal Kombat, when it moved over to the home version, was just like a pale version. Right, of right. A, B, A, C, A, B, B. Remember that? It was the blood yeah, you code could easily for, do the quick... Uh, you know, fatalities. You ever played the Lion King Super Nintendo game? Yes. Which is like impossible impossible to play. That, those are one of the ones I think actually translate pretty well. Right. You I know, mean like Aladdin. The, 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 Aladdin the Genesis real fun, and yeah. Super Nintendo games were really good. Like even if they didn't have a movie attached to it it would be a, just a fun game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, Jurassic Park. The, yeah, the, they even, the Jurassic Park second game was. And they, they made like a couple versions of that. Yeah, yeah. Because like, they made one that was like, the Raptors point of view or something. Right, the playing the Raptors was like, it was yeah. really hard, but super fun. You could eat little tiny dinosaurs. That was, that was a fun game. That was yeah. like the the height of, I, I feel like Genesis, you know, like I have this Genesis game here also, the NBA Jam, which is also lit up. Right behind <laughs> us. Um, and Play when we're done it's here. It's standing right on top of Jurassic Park, the VHS copy of Jurassic Park that I brought. Um, it's all packaged into like one like age and era where it was this perfect like overlap period between authentic and real and then getting into the more CGI. And like Terminator 2 is just that too. It's, that's the battle going on in the movie. You have the old model... Terminator fighting the CGI, CGI generated, version. you know, one, and it's almost like they're duking it out for our approval, and like ultimately, it's the old model that wins, and the new model has to wait its turn, you know, kind of thing. I was and like ten when this came out, so it's all like uh, that time where everything that happens just seems like that is the truth, you know, where uh, like the. Middle school is only like three years, but it like seems really long. Yeah, you know, so like everything that happened in like those early '90s, like at the time, just seems like that's how the world works. You know, not like you don't question it that much. It was like Judge Dredd was actually like I right. mentioned before was the one that like where I was, I was really like, oh, they're they're not looking out for me. You know, they're, yeah. they're just they're just here to make a dollar. Like, right, it's really disappointing because I was, really like the Judge Dredd movie. You and know, there was, and, that's the one with Stallone, right? It's, right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where I was like, well, it is. It's not. It's not authentic. It's they're just, uh, you know, packing it in there and seeing what they can sell. And and some of it they care more about, and some of it they care less about. I feel like somebody really liked this version of the game, where they're like, we should do this. For, you know, yeah. Like, we can put this in the thing at home. Like it's and a it's big hit you know, in the arcade. Right. Let's see. What I wish it was on Nintendo sixty four, where they had the Rumble Pack. Right. Where you could. You know. I don't think Nintendo would have touched it. To be oh no! Right. Right. Because no, they no. were all about. Because when Mortal Kombat, like, they reluctantly took on Mortal Kombat 
and their big thing was we'll have Mortal Kombat, but instead of blood, it'll be yeah, sweat. Right. Oh, you know, oh, is that what it was? It was oh. like this grayish, yeah. you know, blue thing would come off the guys. And I'm like, man, they're sweating a lot, you know, when they get punched. Um, and it's, I, I think that's a good way of putting it. It's like this comes from an era of, like, and obviously for adults, they didn't see it the same way. But when you're growing up in an era like that, everything that's fed to you, you're like, yeah, this is shaping the way I see the world. Like, this is exactly... And so, like, like even if in video game form, this is going to be uh, worthy of, of making an impact on me, of the, the message of Terminator 2. I remember seeing clips of later, of later stages. And, like, you end up at, like, Cyberdyne, and I'm like, I don't remember Terminators running around. In, right, right. You know, it was everywhere. Like, <laughs> but I, I want to say, to some degree, you know, we were just talking about Terminator Three. I think that may have actually shown up in that movie because there is a part like that where they go to, yeah, in Terminator Three, they go to the uh, the facility where Claire Danes' dad works. Yeah, and there's some like prototypes of the different. Um, hunter killers, the HKs. Oh, yeah. yeah and yeah. they're like chasing them down and stuff. And I'm like, I wonder if when writing that movie, they were influenced at all by the video game kind of thing. You know, it's the same thing like the Jurassic Park game. There's actually some components of the Jurassic Park game that are truer to the book. Yeah, I was going to say, like the, the river chase scene yeah, is the exactly. one, which then they later put in Jurassic Park 3. Yeah. Which. You know, and it's, so this is like a whole lesson on like how media was very, to borrow a term from Terminator, self-aware. Right. You know, in that era of like, all right, we might not be able to fit it into the movie Jurassic Park. We'll make it up to them and we'll put it into the game. Right. And then you know, because we know there's some people that are bringing their copy of Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park to the theater to you know right. page by page. Like, oh wait, hold on. You know, I don't see this part in here. Um, We'll make it up to them later. We'll, we'll put it in later. And then we'll put it in the game. How about that? We'll, we'll cover our bases that way. And it seems to be like heading that direction only opposite now where like, have you seen the Star Wars prequel or sequel movies like the ones with yeah, yeah, Ray yeah, yeah, and yeah, Poe? Yeah. I was lost in a lot of those. Like I didn't know a lot of stuff was going on. And people were like, well, you, you need to read the books. You know, there's a whole series of books that will help you. I'm like, I shouldn't have to read books before I go no, right. see the movie. And... You know, because now it's like it's front loaded now, where it's like you have to prepare to get one piece of media by going around for other pieces of media. Whereas, like, I don't think this game introduced new elements of Terminator. No, right, if right. anything, it probably like <laughs> boil it down to its essentials. All right, see if you can follow me on this. This conversation with TJ about T2 went twice as long as my usual shorts. So in one week, you'll hear part two of this conversation about T2, the video game. Of course, you can hear it early by seven days by going over to one of two places, patreon.com slash epspodcast or epspodcast.substack.com and becoming a subscriber. I'll be back on Thursday with a full length and then with part two of T2 on Tuesday. Hasta la vista.